One of the most profound statements I ever heard was goal minus doubt equals reality. Basically, if you have a goal in mind, and this has a worldly component, but to us, we genify it. If you have a goal in mind, the less doubt that you have, the more that that's your current reality. And one of the things that can happen to a person is that if they're unsure of Jannah, then they might get tempted by the so-called Jannah of this world, right? Like you might think to yourself, am I really holding back? Am I really missing out because of something that might not even be there? But when you build that Yaqeen, that certainty in your heart, not only do you no longer feel like you're missing out, but you look forward to realizing what others are actually missing out. Umar ibn Khattab radiallahu ta'ala anhu walks in upon the Prophet sallallahu in this very famous narration. And Rasulullah sallallahu the greatest man, in fact, the greatest creation to ever live, rises from his bed. And his bed sallallahu alayhi wasallam is made of these branches. And he has just this pillow that's palm stuffed. And when he rises from his bed, the Prophet sallallahu who should be living like a king in this world, right? When he rises from his bed, he has marks all over his back because of how uncomfortable he is sallallahu alayhi wasallam. And his hujurat, what are they? They're smaller than probably what some of your closets are. And Umar radiallahu anhu starts to cry. And Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa says, Why are you crying, O Umar? Why are you crying? And he says, Ya Rasulullah, I've seen the palaces of Kisra in Persia. I've seen the palaces of Caesar in Rome. And you're so much more deserving of that. And the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa says, Are you in doubt, O Umar? Aren't you pleased? that they have this dunya and we have the akhirah, let them have this dunya. We have the hereafter. We don't care about these palaces. We care about the palaces of paradise. We're okay. And there's something subhanAllah about knowing that there is something that awaits you to where you won't strain your eyes over the things that people have been temporarily given. You don't even know if they're even happy with those things. So you don't strain your eyes at their so-called happiness nor do you strain your eyes at their possessions. Because this dunya, as the Prophet ﷺ said, is a prison for the believer and a paradise for the disbeliever. Now that doesn't mean that the believer is unfulfilled like a prisoner, but that means that the believer is restricting themselves for the hereafter. And the disbeliever has nothing to look forward to except for torment. And so they're going to try to make this Jannah as much as they can here, and they're going to fail. Now, when you go to your grave, remember that the Prophet ﷺ said that you will not just be shown your place in paradise, ta'ala, which is your actual place, but you will also be shown your place in hellfire had you been one of the occupants of hellfire. And when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala turns you away from that place, it makes you appreciate your paradise more and say, Alhamdulillah, I didn't end up there. Now, the opposite is also unfortunately true that people that could have had paradise are shown it in their grave, that that could have been your garden. But instead, this is your chamber because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave you fair warning. Now for us, when inshallah ta'ala, we commit ourselves to this and we believe with certainty in Allah and in the hereafter and what He's promised us of the hereafter, we have our opportunity now to not just earn what we have earned, but also to claim the spoils of those people who could have earned Jannah as well. Now, what do I mean by that? And this is subhanAllah, a powerful concept that we have in the Quran and in the Sunnah of the Prophet Wasallam. that you're walking through this life and you might feel like you're left out of the things that other people have. But on the day of judgment, they're the ones that are looking at you left out. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, أُولَٰئِكَ هُمُ الْوَارِثُونَ الَّذِينَ يَرِثُونَ الْفِرْدَوْسَ هُمْ فِيهَا خَالِدُونَ that verily they are the inheritors who shall inherit the Firdos and they shall dwell therein forever. What does the inheritance here speak to? Some of the scholars said that inheritance speaks to how effortless it comes to you, right? That it comes to you just like inheritance comes to you, easy, passed down to you. But some of the scholars said, this is speaking about what the Prophet ﷺ said, that no one of you who lives in this life does not have two positions a home in hellfire and a home in paradise. The believer has his home in Jannah and his home in hellfire. And once he occupies or she occupies 
that house in Jannah, the house in hellfire is demolished. So SubhanAllah, think about it. Right now, at this very moment, there's a home in Jahannam with your name on it. And there's a home in Jannah with your name on it. And once you, inshaAllah Ta'ala, inhabit the home in Jannah, that home that belonged to you in the hellfire is demolished. Now, what about the homes of the people who go to hellfire instead? And you want to make sure that you're not one of those could have beens in paradise. So you're walking around Jannah bi'idhnillahi ta'ala and you see these palaces that could have been for certain people had they responded to the call of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, but instead you will inherit their homes. And this is exactly what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is talking about in the Quran and what the Prophet sallallahu is mentioning, that you don't just inherit your own share, but you inherit the share of the disbelievers in paradise as well. And this is a reward for when you used to proceed through this life and you used to abstain from certain things and feel left out. So now you take your share and the share of those who rejected the call in Al-Jannah, their palaces, their gardens, and the things that they could have had. And Sayyid ibn Jubair ta'ala anhu, he says that it's not just the disbelief and the belief, but imagine how many Ramadans they missed. Imagine how many Laylatul Qadrs they missed. Imagine how many Salahs they missed, had they believed how much reward they could have had for their zakah. All of that is now given to the believers who actually abided by those commands. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَتِلْكَ الْجَنَّةُ الَّتِي أُرِثْتُمُوهَا بِمَا كُنْتُمْ تَعْمَلُونَ This is the paradise which you have been made to inherit because of the deeds that you used to do. You know, subhanAllah, when you think about the things that we sacrificed here and we missed out on, we say, let them have it. We will take their opportunities in paradise. Now notice here that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Bima kuntum ta'malun, because of that which you used to do. And the scholars say that if you think about it, is anyone in Jannah because of what they used to actually do? But would it feel like Jannah if you felt like it was given to you undeservingly? So while the people in hellfire are being told, didn't you get the signs? You could have responded. The people in Jannah are being told, you see this glass of wine that you have in your hand? You see this palace that you now inhabit? You see this garden that you now stroll in? That's because of what you used to do because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala who created us knows that we need to feel like we accomplished something. We need to feel like we earned something. So while none of us enter Jannah except by the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we are told constantly in Jannah that this is a reward for that which you used to do. And if you think about the believer as they're going through this life, subhanAllah, how many times will you be made to feel like what you're doing is not worth it. All this religious stuff, all this abstaining, the way that you carry yourself, the way that you dress, all these things that you hold yourself back from, is it really worth it? Like, can't you be a little funner? Can't you do a little bit more here? And in Jannah, you're being told that everything that you abstain from, here is a better reward for it. And everything that you did when other people thought it wasn't worth it, look how worth it it is now. My beloved brothers and sisters, our one and only ultimate goal should be ending up in Jannah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will give you whatever you want and beyond your imagination in Jannah. Continuously do good deeds. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala loves the consistency. No matter how small it is, never ever underestimate any good deed. You never know which one of your good deeds will be accepted by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and will be a means for you to enter Jannah. And always moist your tongue in the remembrance of Allah. Whenever you do the dhikr of subhanallah, alhamdulillah, Allahu Akbar, a tree grows in Jannah. The Jannah is empty. The lands of Jannah is vast but empty. Whenever you do the dhikr of Allah, whenever you remember Allah, a tree grows and the garden in Jannah is getting prepared for you. So, always remember Allah in your life and always do good deeds. These good deeds are the ones which will help you to achieve Jannah, to get Jannah. None of us will be going to Jannah with our good deeds or with our 
remembrance or with our all the prayers we do we will only enter jannah by the mercy of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala but these good deeds this remembrance this prayer this recitation will gain us the mercy of allah to get the mercy of allah to get the love of allah please allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with the deeds he loves recite the quran go to umrah give charity be nice to people pray your five daily salah pray tahajjud help others do all the small good deeds or big good deeds that are available in your life and don't miss any chance of doing good deeds and you'll see that allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will make you happy by giving you jannah in the hereafter Help us build an Islamic studio at www.islamicstudio.org. Link in the description.